Hi, everybody. This is Pastor O of Elam Restoration Ministries. I hope you're ready today. I hope you're prepared today. Make sure you have a good cup of coffee or tea, whatever your choice of beverage is. And make sure you have like a pen and paper because this is going to be epic. You will love this message. But this message is being brought to you today by a great friend of mine, a brother to me. His name is Pastor Robert Martin of Pro Pro uh, Progress Christian Church. And I cannot, I cannot speak highly enough of how great this service will be and how life-changing and life-moving this would be for you. So stay tuned. God bless you. Enjoy our service. Well, I am... I don't know if you can even say uber excited, but I am. Um, I want to give you a little background to our guest speaker today. He hasn't been here since my first year pastoring. He said he walked in here today. He couldn't believe the changes. Amen. I'm telling you, God has taken us from glory to glory. Amen. And, I, you know, he's been a good big brother to me, a mentor, right? You know, the... Whenever I tell you guys a time when, um, you know, I'm very open about it, sometimes you just need somebody to talk to, right? You know, whether it's Charisma and I, we often, you know, take advantage of good friendship, right? So Pastor Martin and his beautiful wife have been great friends to us. So if we needed some, somebody to talk to, we give them a call, amen, they sit down with us right he's also great at calming me down if i'm upset about something he just hold on there Rodell. you'll see what i'm talking about when he talks he just hold up a minute very calming amen to god be the glory uh pastor martin has is the pastor of progress christian church he was the pastor of word of faith in toronto of course, he served many years in the Word of Faith, um, but right now God has called him to be um, on his own, amen, to be a pastor of his own. And I tell you that there is no other guy that I would love, I love hearing. I remembered when, um, I remember one time he was, um, he taught on, um, on, on areas of family, and I learned so much from it. And then they came, him and his wife came here, and we talked about love and marriage. You guys remember that? Man. So I want you guys to just, want you guys stand up and give my brother the best hand you can give him. Just welcome him. If you're watching us, give us a great hand emoji, Pastor Robert Martin. think we are live now. All right. Well, go ahead and have a seat if you would. I want to uh, thank Pastor Rodell for that warm introduction. Uh, of course, it's an honor to be here. And I uh, got some ring. I need to make an adjustment. All right. I want to thank uh, Pastor uh, Rowe. I saw that on your website, Pastor Rowe. You kind of upgraded to something, huh? <laughs> hey, man, that's all right. Keep it simple, right? Well, I want to thank uh, God for allowing me to be here. Thanks, Pastor Rowe, for inviting me. Uh, I want to say, first of all, um, that God is going to see us through this. Amen. I'll say it again. God is going to see us through this. Amen. Now, of course, being believers and Christians, and we'll pray to man get into the word. But I just want to kind of preface it with this. The fact that what we're going through, the key word is through. Through. I mean, we're not setting up our picnic basket in the, in the, in the valley. We're going through this thing and we're coming out like try gold. Yes. If you remember how things were done in, in, in the Old and New Testament, when, when gold was mined for it, was, it was mined, it was put into a, a big vat and it was heated up and heated up and all the impurities would rise to the top and all the impurities would be skimmed off and then it was done over and over and over again to a common time of seven times where it came out a pure metal. It was precious. Well, after all the dust settles and all the smoke clears, we're all going to be precious. That's right. You miss a good place, say amen. amen. We're going to be in a place where we're better off. Because see, as, as quiet as kept, God's grace is going to much more abound. We're on the winning side. 
We're not supposed to be moved by what we're looking at, what we're feeling and seeing, because God is still sovereign. God is still in control. We're in God's family. We're his children. So we're going to make it through this. Don't be moved by what's happening, but only be moved by what this word of God says. Amen? All right. I want to give you greetings from my wife. My wife, Grace, she couldn't be here. We got a lot of multiple, a lot of moving parts going on in our lives, but uh, she'd love to be here. She says, she sends her love, and she says, hey, girl, how you doing? And uh, I will tell you this, again, it's an honor to be here on behalf of my family. I can see a couple of my family members out here, a couple in-laws, a few outlaws. No, just kidding. And, uh, but uh, the ones that I love the dearest, and I see one of my sons out there, I believe, and I'm pretty sure a, a few people are viewing online. I will say this also before we get into the message, that there is going to actually be a restoring after all this is all settled. Not just a restoring in the body of Christ, but a restoring individually, but you got to stay hooked up. Amen. You got to stay connected. Not to insinuate anything, but see, you understand, a lot of people are viewing this by, by way of virtual uh, uh, message today on YouTube and Facebook and some other applications, but the whole idea, we have people here physically as well. And I want to commend Pastor uh, Roe on taking the, the, the necessary measurements to keep us safe for social distancing and everything we need to do to make us feel comfortable. Because see, we're going through this, but we're not functioning in fear. Amen. We're not going to function in fear. We're going to keep our faith switch turned on, but we're going to do what's necessary. Or as me and my wife said many times, we're going to keep it balanced. You can still be in faith and still take necessary measures to stay safe and to stay well. Amen? Amen. All right. We'll tell you, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you on today. This is the day that you have made. We shall continue to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we come before you with humble hearts. Lord, if there's anything we've said, done, or thought contrary to your word, your will, and your way, we turn away from it, we repent of it, and we turn back to the throne of grace where it is all sufficient for us. And Father, we look to you to continue to unfold and expose revelation knowledge of your word, that no person who are hearing and receiving this word here virtually or those here physically in this place shall be the same, but they shall be changed. We count it done in Jesus' name and all in the grease said, amen, amen. Turn with me in your Bibles, if you would. Turn with me over to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and we'll take a look at verse 20. We'll start off there. Now, in the midst of all that's been going on, or all that is going on, there is something that is still taking place on a daily basis. Now, I was sharing with Pastor Rowe uh, earlier in, in, the, in the room back there how God had given me uh, the title of this message, but hadn't given me the nuts and bolts of it. And somehow, every, every pastor deals with God differently, and sometimes it's before, sometimes it's after where he give you a, a title and, and no, no meat to it, then he'll give you the meat and then no title. So we all understand that. Most pastors understand that. But the whole idea is he had given me, given me this title, I mean, almost, almost a year ago, a year, a year or so or more. And I just put it in my little note because I know how God works with me. He gave me a title, and I was okay, Lord, I'm writing it down. Then he'll give me meat to it later on, or be, be, maybe the opposite where I get a whole lot of scriptures and I can kind of see which ones he's given me to possibly see what it's going to be about. Then he may plug in a title and then it all gels and comes together. But he gave me this message about, uh, about the merger and the acquisition. The merger and the acquisition. Now, of course, again, with all that's going on in the world, this particular process or processes is still taking place. Now, of course, most people think and they hear that term, you know, it's kind of an economic or a global finance term. We think about mergers and acquisitions. You think about companies and uh, coming together and, and coming together across a table and talking about how they can make things better for one another. But let me give you a few uh, before we go to first, the first uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians 6, 20, you're already there. Let's read it here. It says, for ye are bought with a price, underline that word price. You are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and your spirits, which are God's. Now, of course, you know, Paul's writing to Corinth here, and he's giving them some information, his first, course, his first correspondence there, about some information about how to conduct yourself, your, your past life and what 
you did when you received Christ, when, it was when he was presented to you and how you received him. And now as a believer in Corinth and dealing with all the, the drama and the distractions that Corinth was dealing with, as a whole other message, but all that information, you got to know that a price has been paid for you. You are not your own. And Paul's going to do an excellent job of explaining this to Corinth, the believers there, because when you think about the fact you've been bought, there's only one person qualified to buy you and me because we were messed up and jacked up and on our way to hell right. because of what the first Adam did in the book of beginnings in Genesis. He had relinquished the authority that God had originally given him, gave it over to the enemy, Satan, Diabolus, but Jesus came, the second Adam, and gave us that authority back. But Jesus is reminding us, or Paul, Jesus through uh, uh, Paul here, he's saying, you've been bought with a price. Amen. Now remember that. Now let's talk about this merger. What is actually a merger? A merger combines two separate businesses into a single legal entity. A merger occurs when two firms join together to form one. The new firm will have an increased market value, which helps the firm gain economies of scale and become more profitable. The merger will also reduce competition and could lead to higher prices for consumers. Unlike mergers, acquisitions do not result in a formation of one company. Now, let me tell you what, what an acquisition is. But if we go there, so you see what, what we see here is a merger is when you have two companies coming together. In most cases, it is a benefit for them to come together, mainly on the behalf of the parent company or the larger company. I just stay with me. I'm going somewhere with this. In other words, we have a larger company that may have been looking at a smaller company due to the fact what's happening globally or economically, and they're saying it'd be in our best interest to merge or sit at the table with the smaller company so we can be more profitable. But let's take a look at the, what, the, what the definition of an acquisition is. An acquisition is when, a, is when one company purchases most or all of another company's shares to gain control of that company. Remember that, gain control of the company. Purchasing more than 50% of the targeted firm's stock and other assets, which allows the acquirer or the larger company to make decisions about the newly acquired smaller company and their assets without the approval of the company's shareholders. I know that's a lot, but let's break it down in layman's term. In other words, an acquisition is when that larger company says, we're just going to buy you out. You have no choice in this matter. And in doing so, it ends up being, as always, as in a merger, it, also, it always means that the larger or parent company is going to win, win, win. But when you have a merger and acquisition in both cases, this is one where both parties are going to win. And what usually happens here is that when this is kind of thought about by the major company, they send a representative from the major company or the acquiring company or the larger merging company to meet with the representative from the smaller company. And what happens is, they want to sit down and say, it would be in our best interest to come together. Mm. Now, I'm going to give you a little hors d'oeuvre here before I get into the, to the meat of this. Just in the case of a, of a merger and acquisition of, 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 a, of a company or two companies, God desire to have a merger and acquisition with you. Amen. When he looked down from heaven and saw you, now, remember, the smaller company that, lar that the larger company was looking at, that smaller company might have been hurting. Profits might have been low. They might have been unprofitable and possibly getting rid of a uh, foul chapter and also go out of business. And with God, God looked at us before we were saved and saw that we were unprofitable, unproductive, about to go possibly under and give up and throw in a towel in life. And he thought it would be a good idea for us to sit down together. God desired to have a merger and acquisition with us. And most people here on the sound of my voice and those who are viewing by way of social media, you sat down at the table somewhere and you made the decision to allow God to acquire you a merger with him. All right, it's going to get better. Why do mergers and acquisitions take place? Good question. 
Mergers and acquisitions take place for many strategic businesses, business reasons. But the most common reason for any business combination are what? Economics. It's all about the money. The larger company, we want to make money. In God's case, God didn't necessarily want to make money. God wanted to bring in souls into the kingdom. So God needed to make an investment in someone, possibly like me, or like you if that applies, someone who's about to go under, give up, on the wrong road to go into destruction. He said, I need to acquire them. I need to merge you with them. But guess what? A major company cannot force itself on a smaller company legally. So God, being a very legal being, he had to come and woo you. He had to serenade us. He had to talk to us and talk to us through other people. Talk to us through, through, through men of God like Pastor Rowe and, and people who had a love for God and a love for God's people. He had to get your attention. And just like the major company, the larger company, who wanted to acquire or merge with a smaller company, they had to send a representative over there to knock on the door and say, hey, can we talk and have some negotiations? Same thing with you and me. God had to send a representative from heaven. Jesus left heaven. He left glory to come down and wrap himself in flesh to speak and negotiate with us through the prophets of old and say, a Messiah is coming, a Messiah is coming. And would we have ears to hear what he had to say? Heaven sent its most valued representative, like that company sent its most valuable representative, to what? Talk to us about a merger and an acquisition. It's all by choice. It's not by force. The only way it's done by force is illegally, but we're not talking about illegalities. We're talking about doing things the way they should be done. Let's keep reading here. It says, gaining a competitive advantage or a larger marketing share, companies may decide to merge in order to gain a better distribution or marketing network. But what does that mean? I'm glad you asked. See, God has a bigger picture. You remember when, and I'm not going to go here, I'm just going to quote it. Back in Genesis, when man, the first Adam, had committed high treason, gave up his authority, relinquished it to Adam, I mean, uh, to, to, to Satan, excuse me. And what happened was God came and looked for his man in the, what, the cool of the day, right? Remember that? And he called out, hey, Adam, where are you? And what did Adam say? I'm afraid. Well, he had missed the mark. He had sinned. But God says uh, a few chapters later, later, verses later, I'm going to put enmity between you and her seed. We know the woman doesn't carry the seed. But what God was saying was, I'm going to do a merger and an acquisition a long time from henceforth. And I'm giving you a heads up on it. We read about that even today still, how God had a plan to merger and acquisition with us. All we had to do was agree with it. Amen. Go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. I want to take a look at the first merger that took place. Well, first, first of all, the first recorded merger that literally took place. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Laying a little groundwork here, and then we'll get into some more meat here. We're talking about the merger and the acquisition. For those who just, uh, just tuned in on uh, social media, we're over here at uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. We're talking about the merger and the acquisition. This applies to us. It's important to us to even be reminded of it. Genesis 2, 7 says, And the Lord God formed man and the, du uh, 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 the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul or a speaking spirit. Now, this is the first merger. Now, you, you don't find merger anywhere in here in the translation. But look at what happens here. You know this thing that prefaces, God created all these animals, then brought those animals to Adam to see what he would name those animals. Now, of course, there was no, no University of Eden, was there? Say it with me. So Adam goes and he names, to this day, over, over 60 million species, the zebra, the antelope, the bear, the sheep. When Adam spoke those words and to those, if, if you allow me, mannequins of animals, the life and characteristics of everything Adam spoke went into those animals, into this very day. 
Every characteristic of a zebra back then is the same today. Yeah. I'm saying this because Adam had a merger, merger with God. His communication was from spirit to spirit. There was no teaching mechanism here. Adam got it from all revelation knowledge. So we see here again in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, it says here, and God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a speaking spirit. So this is important because as we look at the scriptures, we're going to see just how, it's how significant it is for us to be in a merger agreement with God and stay in that merger agreement. God always wanted unity and oneness in his family. Go with me over to Psalm uh, 13, if you would. Psalm 13, we'll take a look at verse 3. I'm sorry, Psalm 133. Let's put my glasses on. Psalm 133, verse 1. Psalm 133, verse 1. It says, behold. That word behold means look at this. Attention. Or as Rocky Balboa would say, yo. He said, look at this. Behold what? He said, I'm going to read some of it out of Hebrew. It says, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. That word unity in the, in the, Greek, in, in the Hebrew means yakad. It means all at once, all together. So in other words, we've been reminded here by the psalmist, it's good for us to be in unity and oneness together. It's good for us to be merged in certain relationships, covenant ones particularly, together. That's a good thing. That word good, it means in the original Hebrew, it means it's bountiful. So it's a bountiful thing. It's a favorable thing. It's a joyful thing. It's a prosperous. It's a wealthy. It's a pleasant thing for us to be joined together. Now, from the economic or the corporate standpoint, again, it was good for that major company to acquire or merge with that smaller company because of economic reasons. Remember? Well, think about it. God's desire is to have as many people come to heaven with him, yes. to him rather. Yes. So we're in a position of what? We're in a position of allowing ourselves to be acquired by God because yes. we've been what? Bought with a price. Mm -hmm. And we want to be merged with God because now we become a part or more like him. Remember in Genesis where it said, and God breathed into that man and he became a speaking spirit, mm -hmm. just like God. You remember over in chapter 1 where we see a lot of times where it said in Genesis, God said, God said, God said, God said. And around verse 24, 25, it said God saw. So eventually God began to see what he said. Yeah. So in other words, God wants us to merge with him and to be acquired by him so we can say, see, we can say, 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 and begin to see what we say. Yeah. But all according to his word. Now, God doesn't have a problem with us having things, as long as the things don't come before him. Amen. You got to put things in perspective. God has no problem with you having your house, your cars, your planes, your trains, your automobiles, whatever you want, long as he's first. Amen. And when we understand the merger and the acquisition process, we'll begin to put those things in perspective where we can enjoy those things. And when we enjoy those things, the world will look and see our joy. How can you be so happy during a pandemic? Why are you smiling all the time? What is it about you? And like we sang earlier, you just don't know. <laughs> he chose me. He loves me. I'm a friend to God. God's on my side. What can man do unto me? What can some disease, what can some unclean thing do unto me? No weapon formed against me can prosper. It cannot work. I'm on the winning side. There's nothing new under heaven. The word is alive in us. Yes. And you know what? I, th I think about this. Go over to uh, John, St. John chapter 14. It's not in my notes. John chapter 14. It's got the flow here. John chapter 14. Very interesting. Now, when we think about the merger and the acquisition that God desires to have with us and has made with us, there's a lot of benefits to this thing. Let's take a look at one. John, St. John, chapter 14, chapter 15. Sorry about that. John, chapter 15, verse 1. It says, I am the true vine, 
and my father is the husbandman or the gardener. Every branch of me that beareth, beareth not fruit, he taketh away, taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it or he cleanses it. Jump down to verse 4. He says, abide in me. The word abide means to continue. See, we've already done this merger acquisition with God. He says, now abide in me or take a residence in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide or take root in or live in, what? Live in the vine. No more can ye accept uh, ye be, uh, that you will, excuse me, that you will abide in me. I'm a little excited about this because I've, I've been acquired by God. I'm sorry. I've been reminded that God has merged with me. God didn't literally save me through his son, Jesus Christ. He didn't just fill me with his Holy Spirit. God had enough confidence in me to come live in me. You know, you're not getting this. God had enough, and this is what the disciples couldn't understand. They thought that Jesus was going to come, the Messiah was going to come, and bring down some, 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 some chariots of angels from heaven and overcome the Roman government who had a thumb on them. What they failed to realize and understand, that God was going to come, the kingdom of God was going to come, but it was going to come live on the inside of them. Amen. That sounds like the ultimate upgrade. Yes. Not just on me, but in me. So when we think about this acquiring, we've been bought with what? A price. But we've also gone to another level where God has merged with us. He lives in us. Oh, are you getting this? He's living in Wherever you go, God is. Whatever you do, God's watching. He's seeing too. Whatever you did or who you did it with, God's there. But my point is this. God loves us so much that he would make a merger and acquisition process available to us. And any way you slice it and dice it, it's a good thing. To be a part of God, to have a God to be in us, for us to be owned by God, because he was the only one that paid the, 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 the price to be our boss, or some people say the cost to be our boss. But I'm glad that he did, and we're going to take a look here because it's going to put us in a place where, as the psalmist says here, it's a pleasurable thing for us to be in unity together. It's a good thing to be saved today. Because the world's lost hope. Yes. They've never experienced anything like this before. And as I said before, we're going to make it through this thing. Amen. That's try and go. Just don't give up. Just don't get too comfortable where you are. Keep moving. Don't, be, don't become stagnated waters which begin to stink. Keep moving. Even baby steps in the right direction is still progress. So we're progressing in our lives. Go to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. We're talking about the merger and the acquisition. We've been acquired by God, and God has had enough confidence to merger with us. Man, that's awesome. Romans chapter 12, verse 5. Here the apostle Paul is right to the church of Rome. And uh, he's speaking on these merger and acquisition duties that we have. He says, so we being many, many in the church, many in the body of Christ, we being many are what? One body. We're one. So if we're one, every one member, one what? Of another. Not to each other, of another. My brother helped me in this morning. Thank you, sir. He helped me get from point A to point B. Guess what? My job and what I'm doing is not more important than what he helped me do this morning. That's right. Because if he wasn't with me and I wasn't paying attention and I tripped over whatever and fell and had a, had a, had a, had a, a cataclysmic whatever, we may be having a different speaker this morning. I know I'm making this comical, but just stay with me. I'm saying every person in Elam, Restoration Ministry Church, has a part. And we're connected to one another. No job is more important than the other. Right. As I've learned over the decades of, of serving, my thing was just let me serve. Yeah. Move out my way. Don't make it spooky. Don't make it deep. Just let me serve. Right. Don't make it complicated. It's easy to serve, especially with the right heart motive. Yeah. I've taught this to my sons and taught this to those who are under our tutelage at, at, at Progress Christian Church. We want to serve, but we do everything unto God the Father yeah. and take our eyes off the man. Yeah. Take your eyes off the man. We're human. Right. Amen. Amen. Not perfect. Stay tuned. <laughs> Romans chapter 12, look at, look at verse 16. 
He says, be kindly affection. Romans chapter 12, verse 16. Matter of fact, we're going to look at, ah, look at 10 first. Sorry about that. Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Be kindly affectionate one to another. Is that right? There we go. One to another. With what? Brotherly love. Don't be faking and perpetrating. I mean, be nice. Smile. Don't be the oxymoron Christian. You know, you're a mad Christian. What's a mad Christian? I mean, come on, man. I'm not saying we're ignoring the facts that be. I'm saying that there is something bigger than what's happening. There's someone bigger that can handle what you're going through because he acquired you, paid a price, and he's merged with you. That's right. So it's not just you going through this thing by yourself. You have a church family. You have your natural family. And again, you have a God who's on your side. Yeah. He, he knows this was going to go down. But guess what? He saw the end of this thing. We've got to look at the end of this thing. Don't get comfortable where we are now, but progress our way through this because he's acquired us with a price. He's merged with us, so we're on the winning side. The outcome of this is win. Have you look at it? We win. He said, look, be, be, uh, be, 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 have brotherly love to one another. Honor one another or preferring one another, verse 10. Verse 11, don't be slow for in business. In other words, your pastor probably said this, handle your business. Do what you need to do. Take care of your family. Family first, then the ministry. Amen. But don't negate the ministry. Right. We're not forsaking of ourselves coming together in this brick and mortar. This is not the church. This is the house that the church comes to. Right. Some people have a church right now with their PJs on at home watching me. I like me now. <laughs> the whole idea is the body of Christ is spread across this entire planet. And we come together and we minister the word, encourage one another. Oh, as Paul's trying to say here in Romans chapter 12, verse, verse, verse 12, he says, rejoicing in hope. He said, rejoicing in what? Hope. Why are we rejoicing in hope? Hope is a good expectation something's about to go down in your benefit. Don't look at the news. You know what? You can only look at so much news anyway. Here's here, here all my, 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 always my criteria. I look at enough news to be informed to pray about it. Anything other than that, it's going to steal your, it's going to steal your peace. Amen. It's going to suck you into that abyss of what's happening worldwide, global wide, domestic and internationally. It's going to suck you in and you're going to forget about dinner. Tell everybody to sit down, look at this, watch this. No, you want to be in a position to be informed accurately as possible and have a place to pinpoint your prayers. Amen. And we're supposed to be praying for those that are in authority that what? Amen. We may be acquired in peaceable life and all godliness and honesty. What else, did, what else did Paul say to Rome? He said here in verse 12 again, 12, 12, he said, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. This is where you separate the boys from the men, the girls from the women here. And tribulation is hard. It's tough what we're going through. It's tough, but we can, we can do this. That's right. Through tribulation. He said, continuing, that means don't start, you're already in the process of doing this, continuing instant in prayer, mm. communicating with God, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the perfect will of God pertaining to what's going on, not, not just in your life, but in somebody else's life. Yeah. It's not just about you, there's a bigger picture than this. Yeah. There's some people who are on the edge. There's some people who are ready to give up. There's some people who are literally, uh, like I said, I think it was, back, was it back in the 80s? Was it Curtis Blow? You know, don't push me because I'm close to the edge. I'm about to lose my head. Listen, there are people on the edge today that we got to get them and snatch them back into a safe place with the hope of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let them know you've been acquired. God has merged with you. Don't forget about what's been done for you. There's been a merger and an acquisition. Don't forget it. Paul goes on to say again in verse 13. He said, distributing to the necessity of the saints, taking care of the house of God. What you need? You need some food? Boom, let's make it happen. You need clothes? Let's make it happen. You need encouragement? Let's make it happen. Whatever the church needs, let's distribute that to the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. 
and given to hospitality, one of the most hospitable pastors I know. Boy, this God takes good care of his people who come here. Preferring one another. In other words, I, I, I like being with you. I'm sorry, I like spending time with you. However you want to put it. I like being in the house of God because we're on the same team. Heading in the same direction, same aim, and same purpose. That's why we like spending time together. We prefer one another. What else did he say? He said, bless them which persecute you. Here we go. Line of demarcation in the sand right now. Folks been messing with you. He said, listen, he says, bless them that persecute you. Bless and, not, bless, bless and curse not. You ain't supposed to be cussing. Another oxymoron, cussing Christians. Present company excluded. Don't raise your hand. Verse 15, rejoice with them that do rejoice. In other words, man, sometimes, you, you know, wherever you are, be it on your job or where you are, sometimes you think about like, like the praise and worship team did. Man, there's some things that come to your mind later on this week. There's a song or a part of a song going to rise up, and you may be sitting there in a meeting or, or a round table board meeting, and you'd be sitting there going over your nose, and you just, you guys, no, I'm sorry, I was just thanking God for how good he is. In other words, it becomes an involuntary response. Right. Not your flesh, not your intellect, but somewhere in your spirit, your spirit uh, it bears witness with you, the real you, reminds you how good God is, that you got a job, that you got benefits, that your family is safe, and it just happens sometime. I got to praise God. Yeah. I thank God for how good he is. God's faithful. I'm not done yet. He said, verse, verse, verse 16, be of the same mind. See, when the merger and acquisition takes place, you stop thinking about how you think. You start thinking like God thinks. Or in other words, you start thinking like this. God, what do you think about this? I got an opinion about it. I got a view about what's going on. But God, what do you think about this? And that is a, a, a level of maturation that we all need to get to and stay to and progress from or progress from that to a higher level because it's not about us anymore. It's about us having favor and having the same mindset. It's called unity. Jesus said it. He said, a house divided against itself will not stand. We'll go there later on. But the whole idea is we need to get to a point where we allow the merger and acquisition to, to have play in our lives. Go with me over to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. You getting something out of this? Oh, yeah. yeah. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17. We're talking about the merger and the acquisition. It's already taking place. And Pastor Rosepar is going, I'm pretty sure, is going to give an invitation for those who may be viewing who have not made a merger and an acquisition with God to do so. One of the best decisions you could ever make is to merge and allow God to acquire you. I've already told you you've been already bought with a price. I'm just reminding you what's already been done. God just wants us or you or me to agree with him, to comply. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 17. It says here, for we being many are what? One. One bread. See, when that major company merged with that smaller company, they became one. That means even some of the stuff that the smaller company was going through as far as not being able to make payroll, not being able to do what they need to do, upgrade to their companies, get new vehicles for their drivers, and we can go on and on and on. When they were merged with the larger company, they got to partake of all the assets of the parent company. So when we said, yes, Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life and save me now, we became a part of God's family. That means no matter what's going on, God's got your back. Yeah. And your front. Amen. He says here in 1 Corinthians 10, 17 again, we being many are one bread, one body. The worst thing in the world is for Christians to be fighting, not to see anything. I'm talking here about merger and acquisition. We're talking about allowing the merger and acquisition process to infiltrate their whole body. Well, I know I've been bought with a price. Guess what? If you know you've been bought with a price, your confidence level goes up. As it should. You've been bought with a price. Remember I said earlier, I didn't say it this way, but I'll say it this way now. One of the biggest compliments that God ever revealed to me personally is the fact that he would merge 
perfection with imperfection. Oh, man, get this. Me, I'm talking about me, not you. You know you. I'm talking about me here. I'm going to be transparent. God and all my little idiosyncrasies and my little hang-ups and my little twitches and everything I got, Rob got, God had enough confidence in my imperfection to come merge his perfection with my imperfection. Oh, I don't, I don't think you're getting this. You're talking about a confidence level? You feeling low? I'm just reminding you that God loves us and you so much that he decided to buy you out before he even saw the product. Come on. Oh, yeah. He bought you out before you were born. Jesus came and came and paid the price for all mankind. And then you have to be born back in what, 60, 65, 72, 54, whatever the case may be. He bought you out, and then you heard the gospel. And now, somewhere along the line, uh, it was presented to you for a merger. Someone presented the gospel to you. You may have heard the, the gospel the first time or been reminded by Pastor Rowe. Or could it have been me? Or could it have been the person you're sitting next to, your spouse, your kids? The point of the matter is, God has so much confidence in us that he would actually bring perfection and live in, abide in, take up residence in, live in, and dwell in an imperfect vessel. But that's not the, part, that's not the end part. Here's a good part. To get a perfect result. I'm not saying we're perfect. We're not. Only Jesus is. But think about this. This merger acquisition is what it means. God having the confidence in us, like that major company had the confidence in that smaller company to actually merge with them, bring them under, uh, pay off all of their debts. That's a whole nother message. Pay off all of their debts and bring them up under the umbrella of a major company who's solid. God did the same thing for us. Yeah. In the midst of all we were going through, so low we had to reach up and touch the ground, God said, I want to acquire them. I want to merge with them. I want to come and live and abide in them and take up residence in them. All he needed us to do is to do what that small company did somewhere along those negotiation tables. He just needed us to comply and agree and sign. And to most of us, we did. We did. We said, yes, Lord, with tears in our eyes, on our knees, at this altar, on the curbside, on the corner, in the bar, in the club, back in the club, where we were, we were there. And the acquisition was made. The merger was agreed upon. And then your life was changed. Amen. This is what God has done for us. Even in what we're going through now, this too shall pass. But man, don't get distracted. Yeah. Remember, you've been bought with a price. God had enough confidence in us to merge his spirit with our spirit, who bears witness with us. Even during these times, even more so, when you get that inclination, when you get that knowing, when you get that, that something on the inside, that's not spooky and deep stuff. That's the spirit of God witnessing with your spirit to tell you no. Or tell you, yes, and make haste. Or to tell you, don't, don't text him back. <laughs> or you say, don't text that girl back. He's telling you to do and not do certain things by the Spirit of God on the inside. It's about covenant relationships. Here we have covenant relationships. We're helping one another through this thing. And the other side is victory. I'm not talking about heaven. I'm talking about when everything gets to a new normal, it's going to be where we win. Yes. Amen. Very little collateral damage. You know, I, I, can you go to uh, uh, 1 Chronicles 16.9? 1 Chronicles 16.9. I'm just going to flow with the Holy Ghost this morning. I got a bunch of notes, but God just said, listen to me. I said, yes, sir. I've learned that over the years. 2 Chronicles 16.9. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. Glory to God. Is that it? Right, 2 Chronicles, not first, 2 Chronicles 69. 2 Chronicles 69. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and start talking about it before he gets there. The scripture says God is searching the earth to and fro. He's going back and forth. He's going, God is going back and forth 
throughout the earth and says he's looking for something. Now, see, that should that's, that's a, that's a prick your, how can I say, your, your student or your kind of, what, what do you mean God's looking for something? God's omnipotent. He knows everything. He's already praised at one time. He knows everything. Why is God looking for something? Good question, right? He searched the earth to and fro, Scripture says. He's trying to find someone's heart who's perfect toward him. They can show him self-grading, one translation says. I sought God on this and didn't understand because of that first part of God looking for something. I said, God, you already know what's happening. You already know what I'm going to do. You already know what my heart is. You know all this stuff. Why are you searching the earth? But here's the other kicker. You're going to and fro. You're going to one place on this planet. You're looking for something, expecting something. You don't find it. You go to another place on this planet, and you look again. Yeah. I'm saying, God, what is it with that? You know, you can talk to God like you talk to God, like you talk to your, your, your spouse. Yeah, Yo, God, what's up with that? What does that mean? I'm going to tell you what God ministered to me. And if it has value to you, I'd write it down. God said, Robert, I'm going to a particular place on the planet. I'm looking for something. I don't find it there. I go to another place on the planet. How you explain it to me? And look for it again. I don't see it. I said, I got that, God. But here's the part that blew me totally away. All my intellect, all my education out the door. He says, then, Robert, I go back to the place I looked previously. I said, God, why are you going back and looking where you looked before and didn't find it? Here's what he said. He said, because I'm expecting change. <laughs> I'm expecting you to see things differently. I'm expecting you to see things the way I see things. I don't see this pandemic. I see glory. I see provision. I see healing. I see wholeness. I see restoration. He says, son, I'm trying to get people to see me the way I see them. I'm not denying the facts. Here are what facts are. Facts are what happens in this earthly body, what you hear, taste, feel, smell, and, and see. Facts are real, but there's something that supersedes facts, and that is the truth, the word. The word of God will supersede the facts. Facts are temporary, subject to change suddenly. Why? Because of the merger and acquisition that has, take place, it has taken place in your life, in my life. We're reminded every day even now, so how so important? I got to take it to another one. Bless the Lord. Can I, can I flow? Go to Joel 2.25, sir. Joel 2.25. See, as I remind you today about the Holy Ghost, about this merger acquisition, it may not take your fancy right now, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to minister to you later on. When you think about the fact that you've been bought with a price, that price is not named. Well, I'll tell you what. I stand to be corrected. That price is invaluable. And you already know what that price was Amen. and what it is, and that's the blood. The blood that Jesus shed was the price, and it continues to be the price. Let me go to Joel 2.25. What did it say? You're familiar with it? And I will restore to you the years that the locusts yes. have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palm worm, and my great army, which I sent, the original translation means, which I'll allow to come. It's a passive verb. I asked God about this. Now, of course, I've learned and studied this. This is not four different species. This is the same species at different life cycles. So in other words, yeah, exactly, exactly, Pastor, different phases of his life cycle. So in other words, God says, I'm going to restore to you. Now, he's using an agricultural example because of where at the time. Today, you can think about this. God's going to restore to you the years that the enemy that the kingdom of darkness, that the disease, pandemic, epidemic, whatever, has stolen, but here it is. It says, I will restore to you the years. So at every level where you lost something from the very beginning of the loss to where you are now, God says, I'm going to restore it. Man, are you getting this? That applies to us today. Don't, listen, there are people who have lost homes. 
401s, 403Bs, whatever the case may be. You've lost family members. You've lost cars and houses and, and things of value to you. God says, I'm going to restore to you the years. Yeah. But you know, as my wife said many times, there's always a balance to this. So we just can't get up here and teach and preach blessing, 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 blessing. There's a balance to this, which is the practical part, which is the budget, yeah. investment, yeah. bank account, delayed gratification, saying no. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, somebody. There's a balance to this. It not, it's, just, it's not just a, a magic wand we wave and God bless us and restore us. The Spirit of God may tell you to buy and not to buy. He may tell you to invest or to hold. Yes. He may tell you a lot of different things. He may tell you to merge or not to merge or to buy that company or that stock or whatever the case may be. He may give you that, but again, it's got to be through getting in his word, yes. developing that relationship with him, meditating his word, studying his word, coming to Bible study, coming to church, putting God first, telling people no, hang up the phone, turn it off. Do what you have to do so that the merging acquisition, which is priceless, begins to manifest itself even more so in our lives today. All right, almost done. Go with me over to um, mm, 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 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I said that already. I don't want to go to 12. Go over to St. John chapter 10. I'll go there. St. John chapter 10. Now, as you turn to St. John chapter 10, remember this. God is a God of change. You remember Isaiah chapter 41, we said, don't you know I'm getting ready to do a new thing? Do you not know it? Well, that word no, don't go there for now. Just let's go over to, uh, go over to St. John chapter 10, verse 30. But I'm just quoting over there where he says, do you not know I'm doing a new thing? The prophet Isaiah is saying, God is doing a new thing. He's not negating the fact that he's the same yesterday and today and forever. He's saying, I'm getting ready to do a new thing. Do you not know it? That word know literally translated into means, it means intimacy, just short of intercourse. God is saying, I'm going to do a new thing in this land. Do you not know it in your spirit, not your intellect? Yeah, yeah. The brain goes tilted all the time. It doesn't understand a lot of things, but the spirit man always knows. Yeah. We got to stay connected, immersion with Holy Spirit on the yeah. inside and ask him, Holy Spirit, what do you think about this? Amen. Or step back and say, God, well, what does all this mean? God will be unjust not to minister to you via his Holy Spirit or his word or your pastor. You get the point. God will minister to us what we need. Amen. All right. John chapter 10, verse 30, it says here, Jesus stated to the father about the father and his relationship. He says, I and my father are what? One. Of course, we know there is a trinity. But the point I'm making is that Jesus making it point a point that me and the Father are merged. And we're going to find our Holy Spirit is in that group too. He is merged with the Father. Matter of fact, if you turn over to, um, uh, where is it at? Go over to, thank you, Lord. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. See, when we understand about this merger process, it takes a lot of thinking away. God, if I'm in your family, there's certain provisions I've already got in the Word. There's certain things I don't have to work and recreate the wheel about, Lord. I trust you. I'm yours and you're mine. You're abiding in me and I'm abiding in you. It says here, what I tell you, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. It says, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. We know the Word, the word is Jesus. So there are three, three separate entities which have different names, but they have the same purpose. They have different responsibilities. One guy explained this to me back in, um, back in Bible school a long time ago. He said, let me give it to you in a way maybe kind of gel with your intellect, you know, your brain, your peanut, dude. Let me help you out. The Father, God the Father designs the plan, distributes it to Jesus to carry it out. Jesus gives it to Holy Spirit to make it happen. I got one, that's all right. Okay, that didn't help much. Here's what I'm saying. They work together, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They're one. Yeah. It's almost like you got a basketball team, and you got, what, 11, 15, 20 players or whoever's on the bench. They all have different names. Everybody on the name is not George. They all have different names, but they all are Detroit Pistons. 
They're all on the same team but have different names, but they're all Detroit Pistons and have different responsibilities to get to the same goal, that is to win the game. Right. Holy Spirit, Jesus, God the Father, different names, but they all have the same mindset. Got it? We're going to save all mankind. I want everybody to come up to heaven and be with me forever. I got a mansion over here for you. All right? All right, let's keep going here. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to close up here, Pastor. Ephesians chapter 4. Now, again, as you're turning there, for sake of time, remember the fact that a price has been paid, so you're valuable. You're valuable to God, whether you're at the bottom of the food chain, close to the top. You are valuable to God. Don't compare responsibilities in the church. Don't compare who's wearing what or who's doing what, what titles, what name tags, how early or how late you stay. You are a vital part of what's happening in, in Elam. Okay? Remember that. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. Sorry about that. 414. 414, Ephesians. It says, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. See, that's, 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 a, that's a good uh, 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 example of why the merger is so important. By ourselves out there without God, man, we 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 on a road to destruction. But now we don't have to be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, slight of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to see. There are people who just really did us bad, messed us over, lie. It's, it's a legal term, if I'm not mistaken. Lying and waiting is one of the elements, I think, of first degree murder. Right? That you lied, you wait, and you waited for that, so you premeditated this thing to happen. There are people who are looking to do that and have done that to us before we made the merger acquisition with God. But now that we've made the merger acquisition with God, we don't have to worry about this anymore, Paul says. But speaking the truth, verse 15, speaking the truth in love, that we what? May grow up into him in all things, not just spiritual things, but all things. Whatever you are, your profession, your gift, your gift set, whatever, your skill set, that you grow in that thing. Guess what? You know why? Because you've been bought with a price, and you're going to be a glory to God for your skills. Amen. And everything that you got coming to you. Here we go. From whom the whole body, verse 16, is what? Fitly joined together, compacted, by which every joint, every member of Elam brings something to the table. Because of the merger and acquisition that's taking place, you can bring your gift to the table and say, Pastor, here's what I can do. Here's what I know how to do. Here's what I learned how to do for the body of Christ. Every joint supplieth according to the effectual working, the, excuse me, in every measure of every part. Nothing is left undone. Nothing. We're not talking about how bad a job may be. As we so commonly say, you know, working in the bathroom and cleaning toilets and everything like that, I found out from <laughs> a little side note that many people will not do business with a particular company is because before they go up and have this major multi-million dollar merger and acquisition meeting, where's the first place that they go to? It's the washroom. And they'll go into a washroom that is immaculate. Say, so, man, I like this place. They give a lot of attention to folks coming sitting down. <laughs> but on the same token, the same merger and acquisition that's on the table, they come to a nasty, filthy washroom that the persons that we look sometimes down upon to clean and sanitize that thing, that sounds like their job is pretty important when it comes to mergers and acquisitions out in corporate. How much more here at the church? Yes. Before service, uh, 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 the person you've been praying for for years, they finally give them the church. They got heel marks in the carpet. You finally got them here. You drug them here. They got here. Pastor, man, bring an awesome message to get this family member saved. And before they come in here to message, they go to a filthy bathroom. Why, why, why are you spending so much time on this? Because some people are majoring in the minors and minoring in the majors. Every part of what this church does and every level of operation is significant. Not to lift him up, but to lift up the name that he is taken and sworn by to uphold. The name that's above every other name that is named. 
And every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of Father. All this is important. Why? Because of the merger and the acquisition. Last one. I got to go. When the smaller company was out there by itself, remember, it was out there struggling on its own, again, to make a profit, to hold things in order, to do things that it needed to do. And what happened was, over the years, it began to fold. It began to lose and not make a profit. It sent that individual knock on the door, that, that uh, smaller company, and say, listen, we need to acquire you. We need to merge with you. God did the same thing to everybody here and millions of people every day. There are mergers and acquisitions that have taken place already, countless, but there are countless mergers and acquisitions that God is trying to do every day. Amen. Pastor's going to tell you about them. Wording's going to be a little bit different, but it's all the same thing. God is reminding you, those who are viewing on social media, you've been bought with a price. You may have forgotten. You may have gotten away from God. Come on back home. Amen. I'm getting ready to leave the platform. Come on back home. God loves you. There's an awesome pastor over here at Elam. He'll minister to you. He'll love you. Matter of fact, he told me in secret that he'd lay his life down for you. That's what he told me. He said he would lay his life down for you. He said that he would do whatever is required to make sure that you become a part of God's major plan of being acquired and merger with him so you would have eternal life and live this life in this earth in abundance and to the full until it overflows. God loves you. I love you. We appreciate you. We'll see you next time. What did I tell you? How awesome was that? Well, I tell you that if that didn't move you, I don't know what will, because the Word of God is excellent. The Word of God was absolutely excellent. So I want to give you an opportunity today. If you want to make, make Jesus your Lord and Savior, I want you to take this time and go before God. I want you to close your eyes and repeat after me. Lord Jesus, today I make you my Lord and Savior. I ask you to forgive me from all of my sins. Forgive those who've sinned against me as I forgive them. And today, Lord, I declare to my past, to my present, and to my future, and I am born again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe you've just become born again. I believe that now that you are a citizen of heaven, I believe that God will guide and lead you to the next level of your life. Now, if you are here with us, I want you to just make sure that you are just not a consumer. I want, uh, you know, coming in and, and watching this. I want you to be a partner with us. We are, we are supporting not just our community here, but we're also supporting churches in the Philippines. And we're doing the work that God has, has having us do. So if you want to, if you want to partner with us, I want you to just text Elam Restoration to seven seven nine seven seven. Should be seen all of these different ways to give. You can give us on Zelle, or you can give us on Cash App, or you can give us, you can give to us through our website. You can give to our Facebook. But I want to make sure that you take the time to be a partner with us, and I want to make sure you know and understand that this word can be that word that guides and leads you to a different phase of your life. And one of the things that you want to do is that making sure that at this word is not just part of you personally, but also be a part of every area of your life, most especially your finances. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over shall men bring to your bosom. For the same measure that you give, so it shall be measured back unto you again. Well, I thank you. I thank you for all of your support. I thank you for being, being faithful in, in continuing to support Elam Restoration Ministries and all the work that God has us doing. So I bless you. I thank you. And I believe that God is going to open new doors for you in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a great rest of your week.